As we've been saying on this channel for three years now, the rising Antichrist, Donald Trump, is going to stifle all dissent by taking over every facet of the U.S. government. Trump has just ordered his White House staff to draft new documents to revoke the security clearances of current and former U.S. officials whom Donald Trump has demanded be punished for criticizing him and for playing a role in the investigation of Russian interference in the 2016 election, according to senior White House officials speaking anonymously to reporters. Meanwhile, a statement signed by 14 former CIA directors and deputy directors from both Republican and Democratic administrations has been released calling Trump's action this week against former CIA Director John Brennan a blatant attempt to stifle free speech. The signers included James Clapper, William Webster, Robert Gates, Porter Goss, and Leon Panetta. And late on Friday, 60 more former CIA officials issued a statement objecting to Trump's action against Brennan, stating their belief that former government officials have the right to express their views without fear of being punished. We all agree that the president's action regarding John Brennan is an attempt to stifle free speech. And the former CIA director, John Brennan, himself said on Friday that Trump is, quote, drunk on power and abusing the power of his office. This country is in a crisis in terms of what Trump has done and is liable to do. And so are the Republicans on the Hill who have given him a pass going to wait for a disaster to happen before they actually find their backbones and spines to speak up against him? My friends, this is exactly how Adolf Hitler consolidated his power over the entire German government 80 years ago, convincing his supporters that it's all about defeating the liberals and socialists in government. Trump has convinced his followers that his takeover of the U.S. government is all about defeating the evil deep state, as if Trump is doing this as a service to the American people when in fact he is taking over the government to consolidate his own power over the country and in time over the entire world. We are not saying here that the powers that be are good guys. No one is saying that the CIA and the institutional powers that be are the good guys. But what we are saying is that this is about a bad guy, Donald Trump, taking over the powers that be, not because he's saving America from the bad guys, but because he is taking over. He's taking all the power for himself. Donald Trump is centralizing all power in himself. That is what the Antichrist does, and that's what Antichrist Trump is doing. This is how Hitler deceived the people. He cast himself as if he was a good guy, saving Germany from all the deep state bad guys, the socialists and communists. But Hitler was just a bad guy taking power away from them so that he could have all the power himself. That is exactly what Trump is doing with the support of the deceived who do not recognize that Trump is the greatest totalitarian dictator of all time, rising to power over the earth, the Antichrist. In our Bible study, we're going through the Gospel of Mark, and we're in the 12th chapter now. And so we're here in verse 1, and uh, Jesus began to speak to them by parables, and Jesus tells his uh, listeners a story. And so I want to go through the story first, and then we'll come back and take a look at the story. So uh, Jesus, speaking to the people in parables, he says, A certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and he let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant, 
that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the, of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again, he sent another servant to them. And at him, they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. And again, he sent another and him they killed and many others beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his beloved son, he sent him also last unto them saying, they will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And so they took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have you not read this scripture, The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So the Lord has told the people a parable, a story. The husbandmen have uh, mistreated the servants of the master. Uh, he has sent one servant after another to tell the husbandmen, you know, give me the fruit of the vine, the fruit of the vineyard. Uh, give me my portion. Give me what I'm due. And they have beaten the servants, they have killed some of the servants, but they have refused to give the master what he is due. And so then the master at last sends his own son, his only begotten beloved son, and they killed him and said, oh, now we've killed him. We've got the kingdom to ourselves. This vineyard belongs to us now. And so looking at the meaning of this story, you know, we see that, of course, Jesus is saying this parable is a parable about God and how God has uh, planted a vineyard. God has, has established his kingdom on this earth and he has called a people to be his own people. He loves his people. And this, the vineyard is a picture of God's people, God's church. Those who are born again and belong to God, uh, this is a picture of the church. Now, Jesus, when he was talking about this to the Jewish people, of course, he was talking about how uh, God had chosen Israel as his chosen people and how they had uh, mistreated the prophets and stoned the prophets and killed the prophets and how they had, had now rejected him, the Son of God. He was talking uh, about the nation of Israel, but the nation of Israel is a picture for us today on whom all things have been fulfilled. In these last days, we are uh, the chosen people, the church, the born again Christians. Israel is a picture of the church. Uh, and that's, that's the meaning of Israel. And that's why God gives us the whole story of Israel. It is to uh, be a picture of for us from the Old Testament, a picture of what is now taking place in these days, uh, the fulfillment of all things in these last days. God is building his church. He is building his kingdom, uh, his church, and uh, he is bringing people from Jewish uh, uh, people, from the Gentiles, from all nations. God is bringing together all people. Uh, to build his church. He's saving souls and building his church. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, people are being born again, saved through Jesus Christ, saved through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. And God is building his church. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's what our Lord Jesus said. And so Jesus is building his church in these last days. He's saving souls and uh, he's building his, his people up on this earth. And uh, he's coming again at his second coming. He's going to come and take his church home to heaven. He's going to receive them into heaven. And uh, there we will be with our Lord forever and ever. 
So the, the point is here then that Jesus uh, is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he says he's building his church. Uh, he's planted a vineyard. This is his church. He has set a hedge about it. He has put a wall of protection around his people. Uh, he has digged a place for the wine fat. He's made provision in every way for his people to be fruitful and to bear good fruit and to be productive and to do what he has intended for them to do and be who he has intended them to be, his people. And he built a tower. Uh, the, the master has, has uh, built a tower, a watchtower to watch over his vineyard. The Lord God Almighty is always watching over his people, his church. And so he let it out to husbandmen. He entrusted his church to church leaders, people who would tend to his church and take care of his church and nourish his church and be and be uh, about God's business in being uh, uh, shepherds over his church. God, God has said, okay, I have my people and I want uh, to have uh, certain leaders that will help my church uh, teach, preach the gospel, uh, upbuild them, nourish them, strengthen them, help them, uh, let make my vineyard into a fruitful vineyard. And so then it says he went into a far country. And now God, of course, is never far away from us. But the point he's making here, Jesus is saying that that the God has entrusted his church to their leaders and to those that should be leading them and helping them along. And so God working through the the leaders of the church, the shepherds that watch over the church, is ministering to his church through them. And so at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. In other words, God, through his servant, has come looking for his fruit, the, the good fruit that should be coming from his vineyard. Well, instead of the, the uh, caretakers of the church, instead of them giving to God his due, giving to the master what he should be given, the, the good fruit of the vineyard should be coming to God. Uh, instead, they say, no, it's all for us. We're going to keep it all to ourselves. In other words, instead of being true shepherds of the church uh, serving God, what the leaders of the church are doing, God is saying here, what the leaders of the church are really doing is just looking out for themselves and they're saying it all belongs to us you know let the let the uh the all the fruit should just be for us we're going to keep it all to ourselves in other words like today we have all of these people calling themselves church leaders and and uh, calling themselves uh caretakers and shepherds and bishops and, and everything else over the church and what are they doing they're just feeding themselves they're just taking care of themselves they're not doing the Lord's work. They're not, they're not bringing forth good fruit for the Lord to receive. Instead, they're saying to the people, give to us, you know, take care of us. And they're taking everything from the church and they're using it for themselves instead of devoting it to God. Instead of serving the Lord and doing what God wants us to be doing, which is carrying out the Great Commission, winning the loss to Christ, going out into all the world and winning people to Christ, Instead of being about God's business, you don't see that today, do you? You don't see all these people to, uh, spending themselves trying to win people around the world for Christ. What you see is everything is going for their own self. They're building themselves a, a fine house. They're, they're putting themselves in a jet plane and, and uh, they've got everything that they want, everything that, that you can imagine, materialistic things. They're getting everything for themselves. And uh, it's not devoted to God. It's not give, being given to God. It's not being turned over to God. It's being kept. And, uh, and so the Bible says that uh, the Lord is sending his servants. He's sending uh, his servants, his, his true servants that are close to him. And so God's true servants that are close to God are calling to the people 
They're calling to these leaders of the church and saying, uh, you're not doing what's right. You're not being faithful. You're not giving the, the good fruit uh, that God is looking for. The, the, uh, you're not bearing good fruit and bringing it to God. You're keeping it all for yourselves. You're, you're uh, saying that it all belongs to you. And that's wrong. You should be giving it to God. Give God his due. Glorify God. Serve the Lord. Live for the Lord. Live for the kingdom of God. You're building your own little kingdom here. You're claiming it is uh, yours. And you're saying it's all yours. You, you want it for yourselves. And you need to be devoted to God. And instead, you're devoted only to yourselves. And so they... The, of course, the husbandmen then, they reject that uh, word from God. They say, uh, we don't accept that. We will do what we want to do, and uh, we'll just beat you and uh, hate you and despise you and uh, stone you and uh, whatever and kill you, whatever, to put a stop to you telling us what to do. And, of course, that is what's coming in these last days. Uh, the Bible says that the, the true servants of the Lord who are speaking the truth, speaking the word of God, will be persecuted, will be uh, put to death. The people of this world do not want to hear uh, the truth. They don't want to be told that they belong to God and that they should be worshiping God and serving God. Instead, they're saying, no, we will do what we want to do. We will make our own world here. We will make America great or we will make whatever country, we will make it great or, you know, we will make our own world great. We will save our own world. We will, we will, we possess it. We are here. You know, the Bible says that the devil is cast down to the earth and his time is short. Uh, he's got a short time, and, and they feel that, well, this is our our home. This is where we live. We possess it. You know, Satan feels like, I possess this earth, you know, and the servants of Satan, they think, well, you know, we're going to make America great again. This is our home. This is where we belong. We own it. It's all about our our life, and our. this is our world, uh, you know. They have forgotten Jesus Christ. They have forgotten about God. They have forgotten about serving the Lord. And now it's all about this world and Donald Trump and, and their world and, and what they're going to do in this world. And, uh, and so they have rejected the true God and they have refused to give him his due. Having yet therefore one son, his beloved son, his well-beloved son, he sent him last unto them saying, Surely they will reverence my son. And uh, no, uh, the, of course, the people put uh, Jesus to death when he came. And today they are rejecting him just the same. You know, they're saying, no, we'll have nothing to do with you. Now, I want to note one thing here uh, that Jesus, in saying this, uh, we see how, how, how he totally separates himself from the prophets. He's, he says up until this time that the master sent the son, he was sending his servants. But now he sends his son and his son is the heir. You know, his son is uh, his well-beloved son. There's a big difference between the son and the servants, his prophets. Uh, and, you know, God sent many, many prophets uh, to Israel and they rejected them. But then when he sent his beloved son, Jesus, they also rejected him. And Jesus is pointing out here, uh, of course, he's talking about himself, the son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. And he's saying here, you know, how, uh, how different he is from just being a prophet. There are many people in this world, they think, oh, Jesus was a, a great prophet. You know, the Muslims say, oh, we believe the same thing that Christians believe. We believe that Jesus was a prophet. We believe that he was a great uh, teacher from God. Yes, but that's not the same as believing that he is God, the Son of God. He is God incarnate. The Muslims do not believe that. And that's the, that's the most important thing here that Jesus is pointing out in this parable, look, I'm not just a prophet. I am the son. I am the son of God. I am the one. I am the heir. I am the, 
the one that, that God greatly beloves, the, the Father has sent me to you now uh, to bring you to God, and you are rejecting me. And so he's pointing out here just the, the gravity of this situation. They're rejecting Jesus Christ. The church today is rejecting Jesus Christ. They're not just rejecting uh, those of us that are preaching or teaching and are, and are trying to say to them, you know, wake up. Don't you see that you're living for yourself instead of living for God? You're living for this world instead of the kingdom of God. You're all about making America great again and, and making your home here and, and being all about your political salvation and Donald Trump and, and oh, how you're going to have a wonderful world here on earth. Don't you see that that's blindness? Don't you see how wrong that is? You know, they're not just rejecting me. Uh, I'm nobody. They're rejecting Jesus. They're rejecting the Son of God. They're saying to Jesus Christ, uh, we don't care about your gospel anymore. We're not all about spreading the gospel around the world. We're all about making America great. We're all about this world. It's all for us. It's not for you. God. It's not about living for you. It's not about obeying you. It's not about uh, obeying your great commission to go into all the world and win people to Christ. It's not about you. They're saying to God, you know, we reject Jesus Christ. They're rejecting the Son of God. They're not just re rejecting uh, teachers and preachers that are calling them to get back on the right road. They're rejecting Jesus because they're saying, Jesus, who are you? We don't, we're not about you anymore. It's all about Donald Trump now. It's all about this world. It's all about our King Cyrus and we're going we're gonna to have our world in this world and it's going to be wonderful because we're going to do it. You know, like, like they said at Babel, you know, we're going to build us a city and make a name for ourselves and it's going to be all about us and all glory to Donald Trump because he's our fearless leader. And so this is what's happening in the world today. Uh, just like ancient Israel rejected Jesus in back in this day and time, so today uh, the church, the so-called church. Now I want to make a distinction here because I get a lot of comments from people that keep saying, oh, Christians have fallen away. And the church is the true church true born-again Christians are not falling away. True born-again Christians that are truly saved of the Holy Spirit and belong to God are not the ones we're talking about that have fallen away. It's, the, it's what is called the church, the institutional church, the so-called ecclesiastical church, the so-called church that people uh, are all about in this world they they you know i go to church and i i you know we do this and we do that and we're making america great again you know this is this is what has fallen away the institutional church the so-called establishment church the true church the true born again believing christian people the true church is not falling away you all, I, I thank God I hear comments from you all every, every time I make a video uh, encouraging one another, praying for one another, uh, standing strong, committed to Jesus Christ. That is the true church. This is the true church. Those who are truly saved, love the Lord, being faithful to Him, and are having nothing to do with this uh, trying to make it all about this world and, and making your home in this world. Jesus said those who love their life in this world will lose it. But those who love the Lord and live for the Lord, uh, who lose their life for Him, give their life to Him, uh, they will save it. They will, they will have eternal life. And so we have uh, a wonderful blessing and a great opportunity. And I want to say this, this is all by the grace of God. This is something that's been given to us. We are saved by grace. It's a, it's a, it's a gift from God. And those people that are lost, we need to win them to Christ. And many will come. Many of them will come. Many of them that, that call themselves Christians, they've never been born again to begin with. 
And they need to be saved and truly come to Christ and live for the kingdom of God and put away all this nonsense about living for this world. But it's our calling. The Great Commission is to go and make disciples of all nations. That's our calling. That's what we're called to do. So we need to be doing that. Don't be cocky. Don't be sitting back and, uh, and resting on your laurels and patting yourself on the back and, and thinking that you're uh, so wise and so, so uh, uh, great. Uh, we're not. Let's face it now. Let's be honest. Let's have some humility here. We are just saved by the grace of God. But for the grace of God, we would be one of those people that are lost. But for the grace of God, we would, God knows where we would be. I know our, I would probably be laying down drunk in a ditch somewhere, but for the grace of God. Or I'd be locked up in prison because of my crimes. I mean, God knows where I would be, but for the grace of God. If God saved me, thank God, and brought me out of darkness into the light. And so let's, let's just remember that, brothers and sisters. Don't, don't pat yourself on the back because you're uh, one of those who see. Uh, you see because God opened your eyes. You see because God did it. He did it for us. He, he has kept us on the straight and narrow so that we can call others to come and get back on the right road. That's our calling. So don't hate those people and don't despise them. They are your mission field. They're the ones that you're here to try to win to Christ. That's what we're here for. And they are our mission field. These lost people that are Trumpsters, uh, lost in this Trumpian uh, vain philosophy, this humanism, this, this worshiping of this, this Antichrist spirit and this Antichrist that is rising, Antichrist Donald Trump. They are uh, to be one. That, they are our mission field. We don't want them to go to hell. We don't want them to take the mark of the beast. We want them to be saved. And that's why we're here. We're, we're not here for anything else. Why, why do you think we're here? Why wouldn't God just say, come on home? The Bible says that the reason why he doesn't just bring it into it right now is because he is long suffering and not willing that any should perish. That's what it says in the Bible. That's why he's long suffering. He's waiting for them to come in so that he, he doesn't want them to be lost. He wants them to be saved. And so he wants us to be doing our job, winning them to the Lord. So, so don't look down on them. They're your mission field. They're, that's why you're here. That's why we are here. We're, we're to, to try to get them into the kingdom, and then the end will come. The Bible says the gospel will be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. That's what we're waiting for. All these things that are happening with the Antichrist and the false prophet and, and the uh, peace covenant with Israel and, and the uh, uh, road to Armageddon that they're all on, all that is really the secondary story. That's, that's an important story, but it's really secondary. The main story is that God is saving souls. He's building his church. He is getting his gospel to all the world, and then the end will come. That's the main story. We're, we're part of the main story. And so that's what we're here for, to be God's holy uh, witnesses in, a, in, the, in the lost world by the power of the Holy Spirit to serve the Lord and tell the people of this world that Jesus saves. That's the main story. And so let's be about his business. And so this is what's happening here that uh, when the the finally the time comes and and it's and it's all over the second coming of the lord then it says here uh what will he do at that time it says uh he will come jesus will come and he will destroy those husbandmen those wicked husbandmen that did not take care of the flock that were uh, that wouldn't do God's work and God's will, that we're doing all the wrong things instead of doing the right things, and we're denying God his due and wouldn't give him his due, uh, he will destroy them and he will give the vineyard to others, the Bible says, he will give the vineyard to others to take care of, of his flock. In other words, at his second coming, uh, the Bible says, you know, when God... Uh, takes his people and gathers his church you know uh, the bible says we will be kings and priests i mean 
eye has not seen and ear has not heard the things that are prepared for those of us that belong to God. Uh, we're going to be serving the Lord. The Bible says his servants will serve him for all eternity in heaven. We're not going to just be, uh, you know, walking around patting each other on the back. We're going to be serving the Lord. And uh, we're going to be honoring him for all eternity as his servants. His servants will serve him, the Bible says. And so in heaven, uh, I can't begin to understand it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. I mean, we don't know, you know, the things that God has prepared is beyond understanding. But somehow, some way, you know, uh, it's going to be so wonderful. It's going to be so beautiful. Then he says here, the, have you not read this uh, scripture that the stone the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, the cornerstone, Jesus, the cornerstone, uh, the builders rejected him. Uh, they said, you know, what do we want with him? And he is uh, the beautiful cornerstone. You know, the Bible says uh, that uh, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. It is so marvelous in our eyes what God has done. God, uh, in sending his son Jesus into the world to a lowly family in Nazareth, uh, a low, lowly family that was called to go and, and answer the call to pay their taxes and they went to Bethlehem and Jesus was born there in Bethlehem, the city of David and, and uh, the fulfillment of all the prophecies and uh, the things that God did working through the life of Jesus, this lowly servant, this lowly man who is the son of God, the, the living God, the cornerstone that the builders looked at and they said, what do we want with that? You know, that's not, that's, that's a worthless stone. They rejected the son of God. And, but God, the father has raised him up and uh, made him to be the cornerstone of this church, this building that God is building his church. And Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the one. The, that the builders rejected, but has become the cornerstone. This is marvelous in our eyes. And after Jesus told them this story, they sought to lay hands on him, but they feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken this parable against them, and they left him and went their way. So just for for a short time now, they're they're leaving him, and uh, they're but they're plotting how they're going to kill him, how they're going to put him to death. And uh, so I just want to say a, a little prayer with you today. And uh, let's, let's just come together here and bow our heads and, and pray. Father, in the holy name of Jesus, we love you, Father. You've done a wonderful thing, a marvelous thing, beyond all understanding for us. What a marvelous thing you have done. You are building your church and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, he is the head cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. And Lord God, you upon this chief cornerstone, you are, you are building your holy church and, and you are building a people that you are saying to us today, you know, live for me, be my faithful church. Uh, when, I, when I come, the Bible says that Jesus said, will, will I find faith on earth? Yes. You will because you have done it. Your grace is sufficient and you are carrying us through these last days. You are our courage and you are our strength and you are the builder of your church. And thank God the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Help us to be about our business with a humble heart before you, recognizing that all that we have has been given to us. There's nothing that we have that is worth anything except what you have given to us. And so, Lord, we're nothing. We have nothing but what we've been given. And so we pray, help us to give it to others, to be filled with your Holy Spirit and your power, and to be your witnesses to this lost world. This is what you have told us to do, to be about your business until your coming, to be faithful and to keep watching and serving you. 
And uh, in Jesus' name, we pray you strengthen us to do that and to not be distracted by the things of this world, not let the cares and things of this world turn us to the right or to the left, but to keep our eyes straight ahead on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name, we rejoice today to be your people. In Jesus' name, we thank you, our God. In Jesus' name, amen.